we don't even have we don't really have to do that. Okay. Okay, so Okay. Hey, Shagheads, Curtis Tucker here with A Shaggy Duck Life, back for another episode of the podcast. And I've got a special guest on today's episode. This is my long lost first cousin, Sean Barnett. And uh, we'll, so we'll kind of talk about when this all appeared or happened, but uh, he's in Enid, Oklahoma. And so I thought it might be kind of cool to get him on the show. And I talked about him and my two kind of lost half sisters on last week's episode. And so, Sean, welcome back to the United States, yeah. and welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's been so awesome getting to know you, getting to meet the whole family, and yeah, I'm the wayward son, gone for, gone for 53 years, and, and back here, in Oklahoma. Here you are. It you is so, so cool. So I started out as a sperm in Oklahoma City, and, <laughs> and, off, and here I am Off back. you went. Yeah. yeah. Off I went. Yeah. So... So I don't know where to ex where we should exactly start. So just to clarify everything, my mom and your brother, my dad, your dad, I'm sorry, are brother and sister. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I, so my, my uncle. So if you guys listen to the '70s Buzz podcast and you've ever heard me talking about my crazy uncle, that's Sean's that my dad. dad. Yeah, yeah. So he was the Air Force pilot. He was the the guy that I kind of joke that bought the the AMC Gremlin and then sold it and bought the AMC Pacer. And I'm like, Richard, what? Yeah. But I do have to say that he did also have a Harley. Yeah. So he did have a cool factor <laughs> there as well. But, um, you know, one of the best, funnest uncles, uh, you know, a kid growing up could have. Because I grew up, uh, as many of you know, without a dad. Oh, uh, my dad. parents were divorced in 69 when I was probably about, I don't know, six, seven years old. And then never had contact with my dad yeah. again and then but my mom never remarried so I never had a stepdad or or anything like that mm -hmm. so 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 let's talk about first how we how we found you yeah so um, I was out I moved about four years ago to Bali Indonesia and my I have now a seven-year-old son and my wife was really curious about his genetic makeup so she put, she ha had me do the DNA test and put me on Ancestry.com and 23andMe. And one day I was out surfing and I came home and my, my wife is like, you have a sister and it's your cousin Milena. Uh -huh. And uh, I was like, no way. And she's like, I, I, you know, texted her, we messaged back and forth and here's her number and call her. And so I called her and we started talking and she's like, yeah, I'm, you know, it's my dad is your dad. And, uh, we, we kind of checked the DNA and all this. And then I called Skylar and then I ended up after that talking to your mom. Yes. So your mom, my aunt, Anne, spent hours and hours and hours, uh, on the phone with me and she, and so before my dad died, he told his sister, your mom. Hey, if somebody comes knocking on the door one day, uh, I do have a kid out there. And so Anne had been looking for me since either 93 or 97, somewhere in there. I can't remember what she said, but, uh, and that felt really good that she had been looking for me that whole time. But then I found all you guys. Yeah. So, and then we just became all friends on Facebook and whatever. But like two months after that, the, whatever you want to call it, the, COVID stuff started to happen and there were travel restrictions. So I was, you know, before I was coming back to America, maybe once a year to take care of business here and whatever, but it ended up like two years and then some before I could even get back. And my, the father that raised me, who I call dad, um, has been having some health stuff. And so I had to fly back to deal with some responsibilities in Utah. Uh -huh. And I was like, as long as I'm coming back to Utah, I'm going to come over to Enid and meet everybody. So yeah, showed up a couple days ago and it's been awesome. Yeah. So, so the, what we call the scaling side of my family, which is my mom's side, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much all of us live around here in the Enid area. Now on my dad's side, I also have probably a lot of first cousins, but because he left my mom and they got divorced and I wasn't ever around that side of the family. It's just kind of a part of the family that, you know, you don't really search for. But so the, here's, the, here's the weird thing is, 
nobody told me, you know, so I was completely unaware of this. So, so my mom, I had a, a great uncle, Joe, that had gotten into genealogy and he did our family tree and had, I mean, just really detailed. Well, the, he passed away. He kind of gave it to my mom. Well, my mom took it over and then the genealogy stuff came online and she just really thought that was the coolest thing ever. So my mom would spend hours searching for relatives and pictures oh, yeah. and documents. And so that's when I think she got, she thought, hey, I'm going to find Richard's son. Yeah. So, so real quick, so what is kind of give your idea of what you think happened? How, how did, how did that all kind of come about real quick? Like the conception? Yeah. I think that. Uh, Richard was in college. I, I think he was at OSU, Oklahoma at State OSU, University. He was like probably a senior, 21, knocked a girl up, and I think she ran away to California. Um, from There's this little weird thing that happened uh, on a conversation on 23andMe where I was led to believe that her father was like really domineering and wouldn't be accepted, accepting of her being a, a young Unwed, pregnant, unwed, yeah. unwed pregnant back yeah. in 1969 or 68 it would have been the conception because I was born in January of 69 so oh yeah, yeah. you know spring break of 68 uh, it was frowned upon to get pregnant <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and so I, I I figure she probably had some sort of supportive person in California so she went but you you don't think she was from California no okay uh, b- so on the 23 and me, I met my first cousin. I said, hey, we're first cousins. And my mom would have been in California in January of 1969. And he immediately was like, I know who your mom is. It's my mom's sister. And I'm like, oh, what's her name? And give me the information. And he's like, well, I don't feel comfortable about that because no one in the family has ever heard this. But I know my aunt that moved to California in 1968 or whatever and um, it's her for sure, but I need to talk to my mom to see if it's okay to give you her number. Yeah. And he said, yeah, when she <coughs> left, it's because our grandpa, so me and this cousin had the same grandpa uh-huh. that was both of our mom's dad. He was saying something like, he drank a lot of whiskey and he was a hard ass and, uh. and they uh, basically butted heads and she ran away to not have to deal with him. Long story short, then, then then a week later he deleted his account, and so and you have not been able to contact right. Her since. So I have no idea who she was or anything like that, and so obviously, I mean, well, I just have to make an assumption here. He probably reached out to his mom, and his mom said, "Get off of that website. Your you know your aunt doesn't want yeah to be involved in this." So basically, they. It's, you kind of get the idea that they weren't wanting to embrace you and, and be like, oh, oh, wow, a long lost relative. No, the mom's side yeah. was like, you're a dirty secret. Yeah. Stay hidden. Yeah. And then the scaling side and the Tucker side. Our just, side was like, whoa. Oh, yeah. Because what what is really weird is, so so Richard, <laughs> so, so what we think is, so she put you up for adoption pretty much immediately yeah. after birth? Yeah, I think I was six weeks. Okay. Yeah, six weeks. Uh, after I was born that the adopted family got me. So I was in like an orphanage called the Children's Home Society for the first six weeks of okay. my life. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And again, I did not know anything about this. So I'm kind of the relative, the son, that I was kind of always off doing my own thing. Mm-hmm. Whereas my sister, my mom, my grandma, my great grandma, they were always hooked at the hip. And so they always, they always gossiped. And so they knew everything. And I guess nobody ever thought to tell me. So until you appeared on 23andMe with Milena, I didn't yeah, even know you. Ancestry.com. Ancestry, yeah, okay. Yeah. I didn't the even know you existed. Ancestry and me for the mom side, yeah. Yeah, so, so Richard went on to become an a Air Force pilot, uh, you know, fought in Vietnam, all that stuff, came back to Enid, got married to a gal from Enid uh, mm-hmm. with a big family, and they went on to have two kids. They ended up in San Antonio and then Colorado, and then they came back to Enid uh, with the two kids. And so... So they're, they're, I've always known them as my first cousins, but they are so, I don't even, I don't, it's not in a bad way, but they're way different than Richard. They don't look like Richard. They don't sound like Richard. They don't, their, their inflections, their giggle isn't Richard. Yeah. But when I saw your first video yeah. on Facebook, I mean, I kid you not. I was like, damn, that there is my uncle. Yeah. I mean, you look like him. Your laugh is like him. The, the way that you talk is like him. It's, it's everything that I remember my uncle being, you know, 
younger in his younger days because sure. you know me and my buddies grew up with him when he was younger you know yeah. and hung out with him before he got married and that yeah. was he supplied us with you know marijuana if we wanted it or, <laughs> or dirty magazines or he was yeah. the cool uncle that was always buying really cool toys yeah. and and stuff but Good dad. yeah and so <laughs> and so everybody every one of my friends that I've showed the videos of you two, they all, I swear, they're all like, wow, wow. that is your uncle, you know? And so it's just so cool, yeah. you know? So so you just you showed up in Enid yesterday. For, uh, well, no, I saw yeah. you the day before, and I yeah. saw you yesterday. Mm -hmm. But uh, just talking and seeing you talk to other people, you know, I, and I'll hear, I'll hear you talking to somebody across the room and you'll start laughing. I'll be like, I'll look over and I'll be like, jeez, man, that sounds just like Uncle Richard, you know, yeah. back in the day. Unfortunately, now here's the sad part of the story. Um, as, as you guys probably know, if you listen to my podcast, is my mom passed away on January 18th. As um, I was flying and out And you here. basically were flying I out here. I was flying out here. I mean, to meet everybody, but certainly yeah. to meet Aunt Anne. Aunt, Aunt. I, I, of all the family, I've spent the most time video calling and, and emailing back and forth and telephone calls, whatever, from Bali to Enid. Yeah. I've spent the most time with Aunt Anne. Your mom. And she was the most excited to meet you. Yeah. I mean, here you are, you're her brother's spitting image. And yeah. again, she just loved genealogy. Mm -hmm. I mean, she, I, I just, I can't imagine yeah. the elation. She sent me just pictures and pictures of grandpa, grandpa, grandma, great grandpa, great, you know, yeah. all explaining everybody and telling stories. And so I was heartbroken. Yeah, I was, I was too. I was heartbroken on my way out here to all of a sudden I get a message that Aunt Anne's de died and I was just, oh. Yeah, it just, so. yeah, unfortunately it just, you know, I think had we known, you know, there was probably things we could have done, but I, I don't know what shape she would have been in. She just, she was ready to go, so, wow. but, yeah. um, so anyway, uh, yeah. hate to bring, bring you guys down on that, but, uh, so it's been cool. So not only, so now, um, not only do you look like Uncle Richard and you sound like him and there's the, 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 some of the things that you've done, but so talk a little bit about, tell me a little bit about what you and Skyler, your half brother have yeah. discovered what you guys have in common. Yeah. Well, it was just one thing after another. As soon as we got there, it's like, what, what music do you listen to? Um, even just a weird thing, like he opened his fridge and he's like, you like blue moon. And I'm like, that's my favorite beer. Oh wow. And he's like, that's my favorite beer, you know? And, um, he's into philosophy. I'm into philosophy. I mean, it was just one thing after another. And I just ask him questions and I see the way he interacts. I see some of, some, even some of the things where in myself, I'm like, oh, that's a character trait that, you know, I wish I wasn't so, you know, maybe say something two, three yeah. times or whatever. And, and like, oh, I do that. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's really cool to see that it's, that's actually been eye-opening. As I've been watching the family, I've noticed a few things. Mostly, I've noticed things that I love about myself and love about all of us. There's actually been a couple of things where I'm like, oh, that's a character trait that I have that when I'm seeing it in someone else, because I never get an opportunity uh -huh. to see it in myself, right? And I'll see it in someone else and be like, oh, I could improve in that area or something. It's kind of funny. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then we've discovered that you and I, you know, I'm oh just gosh. a first, I'm just a first cousin, but, but so my dad, yeah. you know, I haven't seen my dad since I was about probably six or seven, but he came from California, mm -hmm. and I don't know if that's where I got this weird deal. So I've lived in Oklahoma pretty much my whole life, yeah. but I've always had this fascination with being a surfer. Yeah, I've loved the surfing lifestyle. I've, I I wear shorts every chance I get. I'm yeah. in sneakers or flip flops. I yeah. mean, everybody knows that I love the sunshine. I like to get out. I'm I love the water and all that. So, so I've always had this fantasy of, of being a surfer. I like Jeeps, so I've owned three Jeeps. I drive yeah. around in Jeeps all the time. I've had all I've, Jeeps. i become a podcaster. Yeah, I have a I podcast. I make money off surfing. of the internet. Yeah. And those are all the things that you do too. It's, it's amazing. And the fact, this is so funny. When you told me that you were, would drive oh, around with a surfboard on your roof in Oklahoma, and I was living in Utah when I was a kid, and I drove around, you know, 16, 17 to probably 19, I would drive around with a surfboard on my car I, that in is, Utah. It's so funny. That is crazy. You know, I'm like, I was a poser. You know, oh, yeah, I, I was too. I had surfing pictures all over my walls, but I lived in Utah, and I just wished I was a surfer, wanted to be a surfer. And finally, when I was 48, I was just like, I'm doing it. Like, and so packed up the family and moved to Bali. And I've, 
you know, become a surfer. It was a lot of hard work l learning to surf in my 50s. You oh, know? yeah. But uh, I'm 53 now, and, and I'm a surfer, so yeah. I did it finally. Yeah, yeah, you post some great pictures. So, um, and so... So on my podcast, you guys know the earlier episodes, I'm always telling you, you guys got to go for it. I mean, yeah. you, there's no putting it off. You, if you want to do something, you got to start building it now, go do it. So, so you did. So you yeah. left the United States and yeah. you live in Bali now and you surf a lot. Uh, probably over 300 days a year. Yeah, you that's know? crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's basically my life is built around surf. I know exactly what the moon is doing on any given day. I know what the tides are doing. I know what storms are 14 days out, you know, and Bali is this special, special place where even, you know, Hawaii or places that are more known for surfing don't have 330, 340 days a year. But Bali gets swell from up at the Bering Sea coming down, from Antarctica below uh, Australia coming up, and then from South Africa pushing over. So we get swell direction on three sides of the island. Oh, wow. And depending on the season, the offshore wind in the rainy season is on the east side, and then the offshore wind in the dry season is on the west side. So we get all this variety, and it's only like probably 40, 40 or 50 miles across from one side to the other side of the island. So an hour drive if you, you know, to, to go to a different spot. Yeah. I mean, I have from my house. I'm within an hour of, I think I have 27 surf spots, oh, 27 wow. breaks. Wow. Yeah. Uh, everything you can imagine, rights, lefts, you know, reef, beach break, you know, river mouse, barrels, you know, whatever, slopey. Yeah. It's Very cool. Really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Yeah. So my, so he's living out my dream. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've done a lot of stuff, you know, I uh, oh, sure. started my own businesses and work for myself and stuff, but uh, that's one thing. Uh, now you had a wife that was willing to pack up and do that. Yeah, and when I first started having the visions that I was gonna do, that, that I was gonna go to Bali, there was no way. We were living this like country club lifestyle. She was like the PTA president. You were living in Utah at that in time. In Utah, in Salt Lake City. She was the equivalent of the PTA president of the Catholic private school. Uh, in charge of the galas and the, you know, we were living this lifestyle and there was no way, but I was just kept having these visions that I was going to be a surfer for real. And next thing we know, our, our, our business collapsed and went after all the destruction of the business over eight months, we lost $3 million in eight months. And on the other end of it, I think she was just so tired and everything out of nowhere. She's like, would you ever just go live in a tropical place and leave America? And all of a sudden I was like, it's happening. You know? So yeah, we rebuilt our life uh, based on internet based businesses and have been able to make it work and actually thrive. And there was this other part where we wanted our two younger kids. We, I, we have an oldest son that, uh, is working and doing at the time I think he was in college at University of Montana and so he was going to stay but my younger kids I I started having this idea of I want them to grow up as thinking of themselves as humans or as a citizen of earth of the world yeah yeah and so the opportunity <laughs> to be in different countries and with different cultures and Bali is such an interesting place We'll go out to dinner with our friends. I was noticing this the other day, and I'm looking around the table, and me and my wife are the only Americans. And these people sitting here are from Egypt, and these people are from Thailand, and these people are from Africa, and these people oh, are wow. from Norway, and these people are from Australia, and these are from Bali, and these are Indonesian, but from a different island, you know? And you look around, and you're like, wow, we're all from... And that's kind of what Bali really is, is this melting pot from all over the world. And um, before the travel restrictions and stuff, we were going every two months to a new country. So the first, oh, wow. yeah, the first two years that we were out there, I think my kids went to like 11 different countries for at least a week. You wow. Know? They're going to Vietnam and to South Korea and to Thailand and to Singapore and Australia and, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. So wow. it was really, there's more to it than just the surfing. Um, my wife, for her, I think what was important is that the kids we're really being cultured and seeing the world. And, you know, I think there just came this point where we had our whole lives been 
almost trained, you know, America number one, America's all there is, America's everything, it's, you know, da da da, and it was like, is it? Yeah. You know, is it? Yeah. Is America the land of the free? Is it the, you know, and I think we just wanted to see, and it's been very eye-opening, you know, to see, uh, it's, it's not what we were sold. Yeah. The yeah. world is a little, you know, other countries are pretty damn awesome. Yeah, you know? it's interesting hearing your stories about how free mm. Indonesia is, yeah. but with certain freedoms comes less security. Less security, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah, there's no traffic cops. There's no tickets. There's no, you know, anything. But you can also get your purse snatched on your scooter, and yeah. there's no one to, you know, you gotta hope that somebody helps you out there. You know, yeah. there's no taxes for roads, but. If, if the road, you know, the road's not going to get fixed till the road gets so bad that a car's falling in and then the community gets together and throws some money together and fixes the road. Oh, wow. But it, so it's really more of like a voluntary participation culture. But when you're in a, in a small place like that, it works. Yeah. You can't really do that in like a huge, probably a well, huge. It's, it's, there's 4 million people that live there and during, and when before. In Bali or in, in Bali? Oh, in Bali. Oh, really? I have oh, no in idea. Indonesia oh, wow. is 270 million people. Indonesia is the fourth largest, pop, most populous country in the world. So it goes China, India, US, and then Indonesia. Ah, see, I didn't know Bali was that big. Wow. Yeah, so Bali, 4 million people. It's, okay, yeah, wow. But what happens is you have like these little communities and it, it, it's so crazy. If you're driving some long place, you'll see this community. You know, I'm on, oh, nice smooth road. Oh, this one's a little broken down, but not that bad. Then this one, it's really broken down. And then a few mo weeks or months later, you'll notice, oh, they're fixing the stretch that's really broken down. Oh, wow. But it's kind of all fixed on an as-needed basis. But they get it done in like a day and a half. Oh, wow. Whereas in America, you know, you oh, have yeah. road construction for... I, I, after I left for four years, I was back in Salt Lake, and I swear it was the exact same road oh, construction, yeah. the same signs, oh, yeah. in the same places when I left. Yeah. You know, so it's really just so different. But all that, you know, I remember like, oh, well, we need these high taxes because of my roads. You know what I yeah. mean? It's like, no, nah, you don't. Yeah. You I know? mean, that's the number one thing. And, you know, I do Enid Buzz, which is a compu uh, community news information source. And the number one complaint ever, for, for however long I've been doing this is, Pot, too many potholes in town, yeah. and I'm like, you know, uh -huh. if, if that's your biggest worry, right? you know, come on, folks. And in, if you were in Indonesia, and you were like, I hate that pothole, someone would say, well, go get go some asphalt it. and dump it in there. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, dump a bunch of warm asphalt in it and smooth it, and over. Smooth it over. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's crazy. Wow. Yeah. So, so listening to you, so you, so when I first saw you on Facebook, you know, we kind of messaged and everything, yeah. but you know, where I was really getting my, my vibe and my, my knowledge of you was your musings. Mm. So tell me a little bit about how the whole, so tell them what the musings were okay. and how they, how they came about, yeah. what they exactly were. So interesting. Um, so I'm super mystic and super spiritual and, and, uh, and, and now you have know, you been that way your um, whole life? I think I was a bit of a seeker, but more like, so when I was younger, it was more like Tony Robbins stuff. Okay. Right? Like motivational. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Tony Robbins, maybe Wayne Dyer. Gotcha. You know, Deepak or something like yeah. that. Like, oh, this is, this is interesting. You yeah. Know? Um, who's this Dalai Lama character? What's yeah. this Art of Happiness book? You know, that type of thing. So certainly, you know, the four agreements, you know, that kind of thing. Right. But as I got older, I got exposed. I, I, I think I met a bunch of Native American people and started doing uh, sweat lodges. So that's, I think, the first place where I started getting into this sort of ritualistic meditation, sort of altered state of mind. A sweat lodge, you get an altered state of mind from heat and sitting at a fire. The heat and the sweat and the steam does something to you where you get access to a little, I don't know, information yeah. from somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, that led to things like ayahuasca or different plant medicines. And um, eventually I smoked the bufo toad, which is a type of DMT. And so I did start getting really out there in both spiritual and psychedelic the world. And then also I had this kind of supernatural experience that was going on, how I'd had these visions of surfing and now here I'm doing it. And now I'm sitting out in the ocean and I'm feeling like I'm so connected to uh, Mother Earth. Uh -huh. 
And in fact, the, the I'll never forget the moment. I had been trying to get to my feet. So when I first started surfing, I was 257 pounds. I had no cartilage in my left knee, so it didn't even bend. So I'm trying to push myself on a surfboard. I'm a big, fat, bald dude, <laughs> from, you know, 50, you know, 49 years old, trying to push myself to my feet and swing my leg onto the board. It didn't even bend to get on it. And, and, and before I left America, this surgeon was like, you have no cartilage, you need a knee replacement. And I was like, I'm going to Bali. And I heard of this healer named Pac Circus. And when I get there, I'm going to Pac Circus and he's going to heal my knee. Oh, cool. And he did. Oh, wow. Really? And no surgery? Did. No surgery. And wow. I, you know, bend it great. And I've lost 72 pounds. And, wow. You know, so um, what happened is after, so after about a month, of being just fat and clumsy and flailing and embarrassed, I was like, I, I quit. I quit for probably 10 days. I was like, I can't do it. And then like one day I'm walking by the mirror and I'm like, dude. <laughs> no wonder. Like you left America, packed up your kids and you gave it five weeks and you quit? And right then I was like, I'm either a surfer or I'm not. And I planted a pole and just, instead of I'm gonna learn to surf, I was like, I'm a surfer and surfers surf and I'm going out every day. So for the next probably two and a half months, I still didn't get to my feet. I'd paddle, crash, you know, basically I got really good at paddling uh -huh. and really good at duck diving, but not any surfing. So I'm out there all by myself this morning and, and I found that I had more opportunities if I got up at, in the dark and was paddling out at first light, I could get maybe 30, 40 minutes to myself before all the surfers started coming uh -huh. out. So I'm sitting there all by myself and I don't know what happened, but there was this prayer. And I literally like said to the ocean herself, like as this is my mother earth, I said, if you let me ride a wave, I promise I will carry you in my heart so that I, you, can experience yourself through me while I experience myself through you. I had this conversation literally like with Mother Earth, with the ocean. And the next wave that came picked me up and I rode it. Wow. And I had this thing in my heart and it was like the whole time I stayed focused that she, that the earth itself, that the ocean itself was experiencing itself through me as I was experiencing myself through it. And at the end of that wave, as you can imagine, I like tears oh, yeah. pouring out, wow. you know, yeah. like this magical, mystical experience, right? And so it led to this sort of carrying that prayer in my heart every time I surfed and I, you know, slowly getting better, getting better, getting better. Well, one day I'm out there and I start realizing that every day I'm getting like these philosophical, whatever, inspirations or whatever. And I just had this. Thing where it was like you have to get on Facebook and do this thing. Now, were you doing them live? I was just doing lives doing on lives. Facebook. Okay. And I even the name came to me that it was Musings from the Lineup because the lineup is where you line up to catch the wave. And so I sit out there and I muse about things. And then it, it was like I knew you have to do this. And if you find my Musings from the Lineup number one, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm probably like, uh. Hi, I don't know why I'm doing this, yeah. but uh, I was thinking about this and that, like just terrible. I was gonna say, but the, like I tell you guys, just start. You're gonna, you're probably gonna be bad at whatever you start in the beginning. Uh, of course, but you, will. but you can't get better, and you can't, you can't yeah. be, become consistent if you don't start. So yeah. you just started. I just started, and probably by episode 13 or 15, it was like getting a little better. Then by 30, it was doing a little better. Then by, you know. 40 or 50, I now, start having fans. Were you doing them every day? No, just whenever, just, I, just, whenever I would just have whenever, some, okay. something that I'd be like, oh, that seems inspirational or that seems like worthwhile to talk about, you know? I'd do these and eventually I started having like fans, like just like eight. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah, like, but that. Eight you, fans that would be like, hey, I love your musings and it's helping me. And so I kept going and kept going and on about uh, episode 158 this uh, podcast company from Australia had, had come somehow started seeing me do this and said, hey, we want to pick you up and have you do a podcast. And so I was a little hesitant and I think I told you that I, I wanted to call it A Surfing Fool. Yeah. That I wanted that to be the name of my podcast, A Surfing Fool. And they were like, no, that won't attract the, the people you're looking for. 
Um, and so the, my team, which included my wife, were like, no, it's a, the Sage Surfer. And so we became, I became the Sage Surfer, and now I'm on episode like 32 or 33, and I think I have you know, about 150 like diehard fans around the world in Africa and Asia and India and England. And so it's really been cool. San Diego, like, so that's pretty cool. And it's building and yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's not just, about, it's probably very little about surfing. Yeah, it, it, what happens is, it, and so <laughs> this last four weeks I've been, you know, traveling. I was in Istanbul, then Zurich, then America and Utah now here in Enid. And so I haven't even been in the water. And before that, I'd gotten injured. And so lately, it's not really been about surfing. But all the first episodes are like, I was surfing. Which this happened. Gotcha. And, and then you, here's this metaphor. There you like, go. That's it was right. Always there's a metaphor in what I experienced surfing that I'm like, this applies to how you be a good dad. Or this, is how, this applies to how you make money. Or this applies to how you have peace of mind. Or, yeah. You know, that type of yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So... Really, it's been a, musings from the lineup has always been about metaphor rather than dogma. So I never like out telling people, like offering advice or saying, hey, you should do this or I'm some motivational guy or something like that. It's all about, here's, my, here's what I'm going through in my life. Here's what I'm experiencing in the water. And here's this metaphor that kind of came up for me that there's this deeper hidden meaning underneath this. Gotcha. See, yeah. I, I like that. Maybe that's what I'll start because, so, so I changed from that buzz guy to a shaggy duck life, which is, I want it to be more of a journal of yeah. what I'm doing and kind yeah. of behind the scenes, but it would be kind of cool to kind of have a, you know, a message or something at the end of each episode, which yeah. I hadn't really thought about, but yeah. yeah, so I'll. There comes these little things like, and, and, and it's so funny. I, a lot of times I tell my audience I'm learning this stuff as it's coming out my mouth because I, you know, somehow you don't sit do down is, and write out a no, script. I just sit yeah. down and start riffing the other day. Like this, this is an example of, of what I'd mean by a metaphor. Something was happening and all, everything was changing in my life. And I was struggling cause I was like being resistive to the change. Right. And out of my mouth came, um, everything's going to change. You're going to change. The only question is, into what? And, and all of a sudden that hit me. I'm like, oh, that's such a cool thing to contemplate. I'm going to change, so into what? Yeah. And that's like where the mystery is. And so, you know, that's the type of thing that just comes through. And maybe I'm the only one who thinks it's a deep thought or whatever, oh. but you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so it's The Sage Surfer mm -hmm. is the name of the podcast. Yeah. And they can pretty much find it anywhere yeah, there's podcasts. Yep. Apple pod, Apple uh, Podcasts and uh, Spotify. Spotify. I, think, I think it's everywhere. I don't know if it's on YouTube, but just put in The Sage Surfer. And, You'll pop yep, up. Yep. Yeah. And you can follow me on Instagram under the Sage Surfer. On Facebook, I'm Sean P. Barnett. So, you know, yeah, yeah I never yeah. Uh, really didn't get the the Sage Surfer business page going. Just haven't put any energy into it. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah. And I'm finding that it's hard to, yeah, it's hard yeah. to keep up. If you're keeping up with a podcast, yeah, it's hard to keep up with all the other yeah. stuff too. I just have my personal page, my Instagram, the Sage Surfer. And then the podcast. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. And this is not, I'm going to throw this out there real quick. This is just me and Sean, my first yeah. cousin. I'm just wanting to tell you guys, you know, what's happened to me this week, meeting him. Yeah. But, and, and this is not a sales pitch or, or pitchy or anything, but it's cool that you're earning money from the yeah. internet yeah. and you're reaching, a, you know, your audience through the internet. So mm -hmm. real quick, just tell us about this new thing that you're kicking. You've just kicked, just off. kicked off. And if you guys are interested, go check it out. If not, yeah. if you do check it out and you buy something, I'm not getting any money. Yeah. It's, it's not, this is not like an affiliate thing. This is just, this is yeah, cousins. This, this is cousins. And so I'm show, I'm telling you guys that not only have I started my own businesses Sean has started his own businesses, and yeah. so this is a new thing that he's got going. So tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so as I've gone through all this mysticism and all this, um, I've studied different things, and there's this behind any religion or behind any philosophy, like predating Socrates or Plato or the Egyptian kings or anything, there's this thing, Kabbalah, or the tree of life. We hear of the tree of life. I mean, even like in the Bible, they talk about between the mm -hmm. tree of knowledge and the tree of life, right? So there's this thing, the tree of life, or sometimes it's called the tree of creation. 
And I got really interested in it. And as I studied it, it, it was really difficult. In, in its original form, it's called the Sefer Yetzra. And it's basically like mathematical equations and Hebrew language. And I mean, it's really hard to understand. And a mentor of mine uh, taught me about how they had tried to transfer the, the metaphor of this, of this system of navigating your life into what's called the Tarot or the Tarot Dex. And I've taken that and made it really simple in like surfer language. So what I did is I put together a, an offering, uh, a free two hour introduction into what is the tree of creation and why is it advantageous to understand how to operate it in your mind and in your life. To take something from the imagination, take it into the developmental stage and then execute it into real life. There's a system that does this. And so on February 12th, I'm doing a free course. It doesn't cost anything at all. You just go to the sagesurfer.com and fill in your email address and your name. That's it. And then you can, you'll have access to this two hour introduction. And then, then if you're interested in it, you can on February 28th, uh, do a four week intensive course for 500 bucks that teaches you this system of really navigating the mind and then navigating your actions and then making something happen, whatever it is in the real world through a system that's... Yeah, and, and I know a lot of people... Um, you know, I hear a lot of podcasts and a lot of motivational guys and a lot of people say that, you know, you guys aren't starting your podcast or your blog or your business because of fear. Right. And I've never, I've never agreed that, that the law, you know, there, I, there's a lot of people that don't do it out of fear, but I yeah. think there's a lot of people that don't do it because they don't know what to do. Yeah. They don't know how to motivate themselves. They don't know how to start. They don't have a system. Yeah. So this could be your deal. So if you're out there and you're like, man, I would really love to do something on my own. I'd love to one day own my own business mm -hmm. or I'd like to one day become a surfer. Yeah. Um, yeah. You guys might, uh, you know, check this out. Yeah, or whatever. It is. The, the, to me, the most valuable thing is that inevitably we're going to have good times, bad times, right? Yes. So the cosmos rolls out for, in our favor, but the cosmos is a twin and the twin is chaos. So cosmos and chaos come together, they roll together. And it's easy to be the master of my way of being when things are going good. But can I be the master of my way of being when it seems like everything's d being destroyed around me? And that skill alone, which is one of the main things that, you, that this system so it seems you. like you're saying it's it's a way of centering yourself to not go too far either way. Don't go don't get too high when things are going good. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it has to do with that cuz it's not about emotions. It's about being able to be savvy in the eye of the storm. Okay. So like a mixed martial artist or a boxer, right? If they can stay calm while they're getting punched in the nose, uh -huh. they're going to perform a hell of a lot better than if they're all tensed up and and flinching and this type of thing. So what it does is it allows you to execute your plan with savvy, with intelligence, in effective, no matter what's going on around you. Okay. Whether it's good times, bad times, you know I've had my share. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Very cool. Just real quick for you guys watching, don't forget, uh, the, if you're listening to this podcast, you can also watch it on Curtis Tucker TV on YouTube. And if you're wondering why Sean and I are acting a little weird on the video, Graham, <laughs> Graham the puppy is in here. Um, jumping not, like crazy. I'm not quite sure why we brought him in, but he is bored and he is jumping all yeah. over us. So, so if we keep going like this, yeah, we're so we, the dog and trying to keep him calm. And I don't know if he's got to go out, but I hate to get up and let him out at this. So anyway, if, if we're acting a little distracted on the video, that's what that is. But <laughs> anyway, that's part of a shaggy duck life. Uh, yeah. You know, here I am out here with the, with the dog and... The dog and the just, cousin, your just, long lost just cousin. Just the way life is, yeah. yeah. Last night, how cool. We watched old VCR tapes yeah. of, of all the family. So your mom, my dad, all your cousins, and everybody was filling me in, you know. Oh, this was Christmas, and here's this person, yeah. and here's this crazy old relative, and 
Yeah. And it, it was really cool because I haven't seen those videos in no. forever. And, you know, and there's a lot of stuff my uncle did that, that I'd kind of forgotten. And so yeah. it, it's been a great, and then just missing mom, you know, yeah. getting to see the videos of my mom. Well, um, you were so thoughtful. Like, so today you took me to your mom and my dad's graves, yeah. grave sites and, you know, showing me around Enid. And it, it, you've just been, man, so welcoming. My latest episode, which I recorded yesterday on my podcast, is about you. Yeah, so, so you guys have to listen <laughs> yeah. to that. Yeah, so check yeah, that episode out. Episode 31 is about my, my family reunion here. Yeah. yeah. So. And so Sean's kind of interested in Enid because had things gone differently and Richard, like, maybe started dating this gal and right. they stayed together... Richard came back to Enid after yeah. college, and so you could have grown up in Enid just as easy. Our whole family is so connected to yeah. Enid that yeah. I'm like, I need to be connected to Enid. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we've all gone through what we call Enid High School, and so mm -hmm. I'm going to try to get you over to Enid High School and, yeah. and show you the high school that you would have gone to. Could, yeah. could have gone could to. Have. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been fun. It's yeah. been uh, great. I don't know what he's doing in there. Hey, come in here. Mm. Sorry, guys. Uh, Sometimes he worries me, but a he's a pretty good. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. So it just I thought it'd be cool to get you on here. I'm thinking. Um, I think I, I mentioned it last week. So I've got two half sisters. Mm -hmm. My dad, you know, went on and got remarried. Had two daughters. Um, he has since passed away. His wife has since passed away. And just out of respect for my mom, I haven't. You know, I've I've been in kind of real loose contact with them on Facebook. And I just didn't want to reach out to him and, and try to plan anything while mom was alive, just out of respect for mom. Yeah. Um, but now that she's gone, um, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to plan a trip and, and go see my two half sisters like you've done. Yeah. You've, you've come to see your half brother and half sister. Yeah. And um, it's just crazy that we're, you're 53? 53. 53 and yeah. I'm 59. And um, here we are finding. Yeah. Family. I mean, it's just so and cool. We both love the Farrah poster. Seventies. Yeah, yeah. All this stuff. Yeah. yeah. I have. So I'm warning you guys with this 53 or the 23 and Me and the Ancestry. Yeah. You may have relatives right you know, popping you up. You never know what your dad did on spring break somewhere. Exactly. You know? <laughs> or or if he was in the military. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Uh, or your mom. Could, could just, <laughs> so so hid from you. So yeah. what's funny is we had taken mom <clears throat> to her last doctor's appointment. And her doctor was telling us a story about when he was an intern or he was coming through uh, med school. You know, he and his wife didn't have any money because, you know, he's in med school. Mm -hmm. And they were uh, paying $50 for sperm back in the day. And his wife was like, 50 bucks, get down there, buddy. Yeah. And so he was donating sperm. And so in his will, he was telling us that it is it specifies, you know, all of my stuff is left to my two daughters that I am aware of, yeah. you know, and nobody else because he's like, I could have, he's like one of these days, place. somebody could come to Enid saying, you're my dad. And yeah. I mean, cause yeah, the, you were the sperm donor. You were the sperm donor. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you guys be careful. If, and if you do have some <laughs> stories, let me know. Curtis at shaggyduck.com. Mm. I mean, send me your, your cool stories. Or if you guys have some relatives, you guys have, have met and stuff and uh, yeah. I can share them with everybody. So, um, so, so I'm going to plan, um, I don't know how soon it'll be, but, uh, as much as I love surfing, I've got the surfboard right there, yeah. love the lifestyle. The Shaggy Duck brand is going to be a lot kind of like living on the beach. It's going to be clothing like that, but I have awesome. never actually surfed. Got to come to Bali. And so I'm going to plan a trip and yeah, go to Bali and out. surf with my first cousin. That would be the best. So. I've got everything you need. I've got 10 surfboards, oh, cool. uh, every size and shape that you could possibly want, a perfect learner boards, and I know the exact waves to take you, the beginner waves that are even easier than where I tried to learn. I, I was trying to push yeah. myself. and You know, it was interesting. Also, right after I got up to my feet after that prayer, uh -huh. I all of a sudden had this hit where I'm like, why didn't I hire a coach? Uh, yeah. I had been an athletic coach. I've done all kinds. And I'm like, why didn't I hire a yeah. coach? It was like pride. Yeah. And so I went and hired a coach and that propelled me. Oh, wow. So well, that's cool. fast. Well, yeah. here's, here's one thing that I hear you saying a lot. You, you've mentioned at least two, if not three mentors. Yeah. So, I mean, this is like a really, you guys really listen to this is again, if you're trying to do something, if you're learning to paint or you're wanting to yeah. start a podcast, Find a mentor or or a coach Absolutely. or or a course or something, yep. because that's what you've done. And, and always, it, it, when I, I'll be like, oh, I want to do this, but I'm stuck. 
find somebody who does it incredibly well and hire them. It just makes things <laughs> yeah. go so much quicker. Just give them some money and say, hey, look, yeah. teach me this. And I've also been lucky to have a couple mentors that didn't take money, that uh, just, you know, we found each other through conversations and, you know, my Iona, who I tell you was my number one mentor, uh -huh. I never paid her. She just wanted to share her wisdom with me and she died just about a year and a half ago. Uh, and just broke my heart. She, she was the closest thing I've ever had to a mom. Wow. You know, even though I have a mom, but that mom yeah. was like Mormon and wanted me to be somebody I wasn't and whatever. This Iona like really took me under her wing and has taught me so much. Um, but yeah, mentors and coaches are worth their weight in gold. Yeah. You know? And and if you if you know somebody that you think would be a good mentor for yourself, just reach out and ask That's them it. because you I think people would be surprised yeah. at how many people would be willing to mentor them. And like you say, I bet I bet 80% of them would not want anything in return. Right. Just offer genuine, curious interest in yeah. what they do. Yeah. But you can't be fake. And don't be doing it to, like, get something. Right. Yeah. Just interact with them because you're genuinely curious and genuinely like what they're doing. And it's interesting how a relationship will begin. Yeah. And you just keep giving wherever you can offering gratitude and being genuinely curious and curious about them rather than just what you can get from yeah. them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Be supportive of them and of the relationship, you know? And that that's a, for mentorship, that's been the key, you know, in all my great mentorships is I just developed a genuine relationship with the person and then all the wisdom just came freely. Yeah. They, people love to tell you, yeah, all the, all yeah. the wise shit that they know. Yeah, yeah, I like to share that stuff. Yeah, and and I do too. I mean, I, I love. I have people that call me and mm -hmm. and want advice or or stuff, and and I give it. And you know, when I was coming up, there just wasn't. There weren't mentors for how to do the internet and how to. Mm -hmm. You know, we were figuring out a lot of the stuff that I was figuring out on our own. But I did get in groups and d discussion groups and stuff back in the day, and we would share advice and that got me through like SEO and web building yeah. way quicker than had I tried. I never opened a book. Yeah. I never opened like a web design book or a how to do SEO book. It mm. just, I would rather tinker and try to figure it out, but then also consult with other people yeah. and say, Hey, what did you guys do to, to get to this point? And they would say, well, I tried this and I'd be like, well, I tried that too and it didn't work, but I tried this and it worked. And then, and that's how we used to, I mean, we used to control Google. I yeah. mean, for, for 10 years, yeah. we all had this kind of, we all, I mean, there was, there was the gurus, mm -hmm. you know, the John Chows and the, the different guys, and we would kind of follow them, but then we would get into their discussion groups and share all these little tidbits. And so we could all get our websites ranked and, mm -hmm. and built, you know, and, and always ahead of Google until that, damn panned up day. So I'm like you. It, yeah. And that's another thing is your business through a, a lot of different things kind of collapsed and you had to kind of start over. Yeah. And that's many, many times. Yeah. And it that's, was interesting when we were talking all the way back to childhood, we've had this entrepreneurial oh, yeah, spirit, yeah, both yeah. of us. That's been really cool to notice that, you know? Yeah. So you guys, if you're out there and you're working 40 hours a week for somebody and you've been doing that a long time, think back to when you were a kid. Did you ever you know, sell lemonade or, right. or, or pull flowers and sell them to the other neighbor or, or wacky little things to earn money when you were a kid and maybe into grade school, junior high. If you did things like that, yeah. you probably are not, are an entrepreneur and you just haven't found your calling yeah. or, but well, and, and here's what I'd say on that. And I'm sure that this is your experience too. You're just not practicing. Exactly. Yeah. All you have to do is whatever you come up with, just do it. And, and instead of trying to be like the first time I launch, it needs to be yes, perfect. Yes. Just practice, Please. practice selling something, practice, yeah. you know, just creating a business plan, practice, practice, practice. You keep practicing, you'll get good at it. Yeah. Whether it's the guitar or launching a business <laughs> or sex. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> and I've told everybody, if you do something online, mm -hmm. you almost can't not eventually make money. Yeah. It's, it's just so crazy. You just have to keep practicing. Yeah, you just have to keep in dis and discipline yeah, and consist up, consistency. Consistency, discipline, practice, yeah. and let go of the ego of, oh, that, was, that sucked. Remember oh, yeah. we were talking the other day, when you hear that sucked, 
That's the diamond mine. Because if you can make what sucked not suck, if you can fix what sucks, you can make a lot of money. You're gonna make a lot of money. Yeah. So every time we hear ourselves, especially say, "Oh, that sucks." There you go. There's business, your diamond mine. Business yeah, idea right there. There it is. Just make that not suck. Yeah. And it's gonna be. I mean, so many money. times you go into a restaurant. Yeah. And you eat like a, a steak or a burger, and you're like, "Man, that meal sucked." Yeah. I mean, as simple as a, a restaurant, but with me, cartoon. You know, when I got into the cartoon logo niche for ten years, mm -hmm. you know, I thought a lot of of logos online sucked. Yeah. And and I just you I'll know make I, a better logo. I, I'll make a better logo. Yeah. If all the burgers in your town suck, there's obviously a need for a good burger joint. You yeah. know. And if you do one and do it right, you're going to be very successful. And podcasts. If, right. I listen to a lot of podcasts. Podcast, and I don't know how many times I've said to myself that podcast sucks, right? And I don't listen to it anymore. It yeah. it only it takes very little yeah. for me not to like a podcast yeah. because you you hear so much and you're and it's the same person and the same voice mm -hmm. over and over and over again. If there's something that irritates you or that sucks about that podcast, yeah. like some of them, I know the people are reading off of a sheet of paper, yeah. And I'm like, man, that sucks. That sucks. So then you don't do that. So you don't do that. Yeah, so that's you, why you build something that's interesting. Exactly. Yeah. So so a Shaggy Duck life in this episode, we, everybody was like, well, "What are you guys going to podcast about?" And I'm like, "I don't know." Yeah. Multiple you know, people asked us. What Sean you guys and I are going to sit down and and just start talking. Let it rip. I mean, yeah. yeah just I, let it rip. I mean, I kind of had an idea of you know telling our story, but there, there was no script. There's yeah. no reading. Oh, and, it's gone all over the place. And I, and I hope, <laughs> and I think those podcasts are the most interesting. Yeah. I think people like to, listen to, look at Joe Rogan. He doesn't yeah. go in saying, today I'm going to talk about NFTs. Yeah. And, and then you're like, okay, I'm going to listen to two hours worth of NFTs. Yeah. He's like a, he's like a, a morning radio show. Yeah. Where you never, the, it's, you're all over the road. You're, yeah. you're talking about all this. And, and so, um, so if you're, if there's a niche, of a podcast or a blog or, or a YouTube channel and the, the people towards the top, if you ever look at them and you say, man, they suck. Yeah. I could do, I could do that. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. And if you wanted to be a podcaster and you're like, I don't, I can't think of anything interesting to say, then become interesting. Exactly. You know what I mean? Become an interesting person. Get out there and take an adventure and do something crazy, and then all of a sudden you'll have something interesting to talk about. Get off your damn couch. 100%. And get out there and make a fool of yourself. The, that, the stuff on the other side of that is some of the funniest and funnest and most interesting things. Well, look at TikTok. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, and yeah, and look at me. So I was the guy. I was, I was a business guy sitting on the couch, reading the newspaper in the morning, come home at five, would just do nothing. And then I, then, then I kind of, the internet came along and I, yeah. I kind of started learning stuff. And then I built Enid Buzz. Well, doing Enid Buzz, I'm like, I need content. I need something to talk about and do. So I've flown with the Thunderbirds. Yeah. I've interviewed Garth Brooks. I've interviewed so Gene Simmons. Cool. I went to, to Nebraska and slept in a park just so I could right. talk about the solar eclipse, the full solar eclipse. Exactly. I mean, and, and, and I'm going to go with Skylar and we're going to go out and shoot, right. you know, night photography. And yeah. I'm going to come see you in Bali and I'm going to make yeah. podcast and YouTube videos out of all of those adventures. And it doesn't have to be something huge and expensive and ex just, get, out just get, out, get off the yeah. couch and go do something. You know, there, there, there was there's also this saying, like, uh, I think it was my mom that would say it to me, like, if, if any of the kids in the house would say, I'm bored, she'd go, if you're bored, you're boring. Uh, and I loved that saying. It's so true. If yeah. you're bored, you're boring. Yeah. If, you're, if you don't have anything interesting to say, go become interesting. Get out there. Yeah. Just, yeah. Well, start, and it's just so easy and so low cost to start a podcast or yeah. a YouTube channel or a blog. Or teach a it, course. Or teach a course. Yeah, you may know something, launch a course. Who cares if you make five bucks? Make one dollar and then figure out what you did so the next time you make five dollars and then yeah. move on to, yeah. a, you know, don't shoot for, well, if I'm going to do this, I need to make $10,000 a month right off the bat. Every, everybody starts at $1, one right. follower, and, and it goes from there. That's it. There's one a guy fan. in town that yeah. talking to you right now. I'm probably going to call him up to interview him. Mm -hmm. He's a construction guy here, yeah. here in Enid, Oklahoma, and he does construction, and he decided to start some YouTube videos talking about, you know, how do you do drywall? Yeah. How do you fix a shingle on a roof? And he started a YouTube channel, and I just saw him post this morning 9,000 followers Wow. On his YouTube channel, I think he went over a million views a couple months ago, but about two months ago he posted 
he finally, for the first time about two months ago, he made more money off of his YouTube channel than his construction business. Wow. So now, so that's how you do it. You always keep your job. You guys got to yeah. pay the bills. You've yeah. always got to have a job. But you take that job, and at five o'clock, what are you going to do from five o'clock till yeah. ten o'clock at night? Scroll Instagram, watch quit, Jeopardy. Quit watching Netflix and yeah. scrolling Facebook. Start a business. Start a YouTube channel. Just get it started like he did, and then eventually, when you that day that you start making more money with that side gig and than you, you do with your job, that, that, that's yeah. when you can know you can get rid of. It. Now he's yeah. still doing construction. Um, I don't know, you know, when he's gonna. I'll try to get him on the show and, yeah. and talk to him and ask him about it. But so cool. that's how it happens. You just. Yeah. How long ago did he start doing the YouTube? I don't videos? think that long ago. I, I'm gonna guess. Something? I'm gonna guess two years. Okay, that's um, about, sounds about right. Yeah. You know, give you don't. You're not gonna become overnight. No, it's gonna take a year before you yeah. even see any kind yeah. of anything. Probably Je no money. Yeah. It's all about can I sustain? Can I, can I give more discipline to what I'm doing today than I did yesterday? Yeah. It's never about competing against somebody else and measuring yourself about somebody else. Yeah. Weren't we talking last night about when I was a swim coach and I told kids, I said it's self-evident. If you beat your own time every day, you'll eventually you're gonna get past. You'll yeah. be the world record. Yeah. Holder. You know what I mean? Yeah. There comes a point. If you beat your own time every day, you will be the world record holder. Yeah. You know? And just, just, just beat it yeah, by a... Somebody quits. Beat it by a second a week. Right. 52 weeks later. 52 yeah. weeks later. Right. I mean, I mean, yeah. it's... Yeah. You just got to take everything in these little, small yeah, just be, increments. Just be better today than you were yesterday. Yeah. That's it. Become a greater version of yourself today than you were yesterday. And no matter what you're doing, you'll succeed as long as every day you improve. It's yeah. inevitable. Yeah. 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 And put some content out there because that, that's that's where you're going to make your money. Just put some content out there. It can be, God, a million things. And I've got prior episodes uh, from uh, that buzz guy that kind of tell, I yeah, I think I did one episode where it was like, there were, at one point there was like, I was making money 50 different ways. Yeah. And, and I think I listed them on there and it, you know. And one of them might have been, you know, twenty bucks a month, you know, and yeah. one of them was four thousand yeah. dollars a month. But when you added them all yeah. up, we had a little subscription-based thing that was eleven dollars per person, but we ended up getting three thousand people in it, and that was a nice little addition to our income. Oh yeah, some little eleven-dollar membership to this little idea we had. Yeah, you know? so. yeah, with Mailchimp and Patreon, and and I, I, there's just so many ways of attracting people, and and but like you said, uh, don't be boring. Yeah. Don't just don't be boring. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can't just kind of, you know, find something online and read a script. You gotta get out there and live life and mm -hmm. and then talk about it. Yeah. I don't know. So go for it. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Super well, cool. I think uh, I think we've we've almost, we're just about an almost, hour. Almost so. almost hit the hour mark. Nice. So I'm gonna let you off the hook. And it's been, uh, a pleasure. it's been cool. You're leaving Oklahoma tomorrow. Tomorrow I leave at about noon, heading back to Indonesia. Yeah, and from, so and it'll be a long, probably quite a while before you get back to the U.S. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. This one, it's this particular uh, trip has been full of challenges to say yeah. the least, and um, I'm just excited to get back. You know, in the last three months, I only surfed like eight or nine days because I just had injury and sickness yeah. and had to leave and come to America. So. I just can't wait to get back home into my routine and keep with it and, yeah. you know, just keep developing all the stuff. I'm so excited about yeah. all the businesses we're creating and the um, lifestyle and I, I miss my kids and oh, yeah. I miss my wife and, you know, the sunshine, yeah, the and warm weather, 80 degrees every day. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, what so, a life. Yeah. yeah. So you guys don't forget, uh, the Sage Surfer. Yeah. Um, and, and just go, uh, is it sagesurfer.com to sign up for the free course? Yeah. Um, or if you just want to follow me on Instagram, it's the Sage Surfer. And then the podcast is called the Sage Surfer Musings from the lineup. Yeah. 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 So check all that out. Um, and again, do listen to episode. What'd you say? Thirty-one is thirty-one. About, yeah, is gonna be, it'll be a little bit about his yeah. his trip here in the into the states, meeting meeting family. You know, one last thing I want to say, and you were touching on this right towards the end, where you were like to find your niche or whatever. I'm a huge fan of etymology, so I always wonder, like, where did that word come from? And there's this word called weird, where we go, "You're a weirdo," right? We've demonized this word weird, uh -huh. but the root of weird is W-Y-R-D. It's a Scottish word and it literally translates to the ability to manifest your destiny. Oh, wow. So 
instead of going like when you hear, oh, I don't want to be weird or I'm a weird, where you are weird is actually your genius. That's actually the most valuable thing you have. So look for the places that you're a weirdo and that's where your niche is because that's where you're unique. What you can do that anyone else can do is boring and nobody needs it. What we need is everybody's unique weirdness, yeah. right? And to get that out there, whatever that looks like and however that means, we need everybody to shine their weirdness, that unique little weird thing that makes you different than anybody else. And yeah. just go with that. You yeah. know, that's what the world's hungry for. Oh, yeah. Well, think, Authentic think, weirdness. Yeah, think about <laughs> think about some of the pop stars, the ones that wear the weird outfits yeah. or, or the, are the, the you, you would see them go yeah. into the Grammys and think, that person is weird. Yeah. I remember, God, I'm, yeah, that's I mean, what makes them special. but that's what makes them special. And that's what makes them genius. That's what, and that's what's valuable. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Good, great idea. I yeah. love it. So, yeah. Well, Can thanks. End on that note, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for being on the All show. Right, uh, again, you guys, thanks for checking in. I appreciate you guys. If you guys are listening to the podcast, don't forget, you can go to YouTube and watch us fight with the dog. Yeah. He finally has gone to sleep, so I uh, wish that had happened earlier, but... Uh, Check us out on the YouTube channel, and uh, you guys have a great day. We're going to get out of here, and we'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sean. Mm -hmm.